How do we avoid the danger zones in the grocery store, in our kitchen, in restaurants? Let's talk about the 14 foods to avoid for better health. And there could be 14, 15, 100, uh, but we're going to just kind of you know, play with this a little bit today. Um, first of all, you know, if, if, if you read something on a label and you don't know what it is and you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. <laughs> I mean, if it's got, uh, you know, um, uh, butylated hydroxytoluene, mm, uh, boy, uh, do you have that in your pantry? Is that something you sprinkle on your salad or on your sweet potato at night? Uh, probably not, right? Butylated hydroxytoluene, otherwise known as BHT, is a known carcinogen that's banned in most countries, except the United States. Nope, still in the food. So don't eat stuff like that. It's not a chemistry project. It's food. If it says sterile lactate, uh, what's that? Uh, is that uh, something you have in your salt shaker to put on your, uh, you know, <laughs> tomatoes when you're having a salad? No. So basically, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Second thing is, what did people eat? Like, you know, historically, and that's probably a good bet from a traditional point of view about what you can eat. If your grandmother wouldn't recognize it as food, probably not good to eat. Or probably these days, it might be your great or great, great grandmother, right? So do they know what Lunchables were or Go-Gurt or Pop-Tarts or Mountain Dew was? Probably not, right? <laughs> so I think, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really simple thing to think about. Like, what did they eat? You know, I, I people say, oh, I, I organic this and grass fed that. I have news for you folks. Everything on my, I mean, my, I'm old, right? So my grandparents were born in like 1898, 1900, 1903, right? Everything they ate was organic. Everything they ate was grass fed. There wasn't anything else. That's all they had. There were no pesticides, herbicides, chemicals, uh, fertilizers, all that stuff came after World War II, a little bit, you know, after World War One. So basically, those things were not were not even around. So so eat real food, uh, eat whole food, eat eat uh, unadulterated food, uh, and that's good. We're we're kind of moving back towards that. Next, um, refined oils. These are you know controversial, and there are many scientists who believe that these are healthful, that they lower the risk of heart disease. And I think, you know, we have to be very careful because the science is really mucky around nutrition. A lot of it's population studies. A lot of it is, you know, uh, trial, clinical trials, but how they were designed, what it, foods were, what was included, what was not included, really makes a difference. So, you know, there was a big study uh, that was a, actually wouldn't be ethical today where they took 9,000 people who were uh, committed to mental institutions and they split them into groups and half got butter and half got corn oil, which is an omega-6 oil. They followed them for years and they found that the, uh, and this is actually an interesting story, they found that people had the corn oil, even though their LDL was lowered and their cholesterol was better than the people who had the butter and the saturated fat, had a higher risk of heart attack and death. They did not publish a study because it contradicted their Diet fat hypothesis, uh, Ansel Keys, I've written about this in Eat Fat, Get Thin. They contradicted this hypothesis and they basically didn't publish it. And there was a an NIH scientist who knew about this study because it was quite a big study. And it was like, why was this published? He went and found the son of the original researcher. And he said, hey, do you, do you know if there's any data from this or if there's, where the all the, the data is? And he said, well, gosh, I don't know. My dad died recently and... I think it might be in the basement. So he like drove a hundred miles to go to his dad's old house and he went in the basement and he found these, you know, old records and, 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 and data and he handed it over to this guy and he published it, you know, a few years ago. So I think, you know, we, we have to sort of try to figure out what makes sense. Now, some of the oils like soybean oil is 10% of our calories. It's industrial soy, it's GMO soy, it's spray with glyphosate, uh, it, you can argue that GMO is good or bad or whatever, that, that, that the actual plant that's produced by GMO is good or bad, but there's no argument that glyphosate is bad. <laughs> like, there's just none. It's not good for the soil. It's not good for your microbiome. It may cause cancer. And uh, it, it, we're eating it in large quantities. It's in you know most people's urine. I tested mine. I thought I eat healthy, but I travel a lot, so I can't always control what I'm eating. And basically, you know, I, I was in the 50th percentile for glyphosate, which is pretty freaky. I don't like that. And I'm trying to you know improve that. But it's still, you know, this is this is um, you know, Roundup or, or you know what we call uh, you know Roundup ready soybeans. 
made by Monsanto, the people who brought you Dioxin, Agent Orange, and DDT, <laughs> great company. Now, most people don't even know that they're eating it, right? It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm taking soybean oil and, you know, but yeah, you can put it on your, your salad or you can cook with it. But most people are getting it in processed foods. It's the main oil that's industrial soy oil that's used in processed foods. So you really want to stay away from that. It's in fast food, grains, desserts, packaged snacks, muffins, potato chips. Uh, you know, it's actually in conventionally raised meat. Um, it's probably what's, what they're using when they cook in restaurants, cafeterias, diners. And so it's, it's just stay away from that. Stay away from any of these refined oils. Uh, I always say better safe than sorry. There's a lot of great fats out there. Olive oil, avocado oil, you know, nuts and seeds oils. Those are fine. You know, canola oil and soybean oil have a mixture of omega-6 and omega-3, which may offset some of the effects on the heart uh, that the corn oil had, which was just omega-6. But I would definitely avoid all the omega-6 oils. And, and you can eat them, right? They're, you can eat them from the raw food. They're fine to have. You need them. But not the massive quantities we're having. I think it's like 10% of our calories. That is a thousandfold increase in soybean oil intake in the last 100 years. Okay, next is hydrogenated. Now, most soybean oil in foods is hydrogenated. They've sort of changed it because of this grass ruling. But basically, hydrogenated uh, fats means they've chemically altered the fat. It's a plant oil that that is liquid at room temperature, and they've injected it with hydrogen uh, to bind to the fats. Uh, because and it's, it's kind of a chemical thing. Saturated just means saturated with hydrogen atoms, right? Unsaturated means no, not as many, uh, or polyunsaturated, right? Which maybe a lot unsaturated or monounsaturated, right? That's what it means. And so the the, the uh, they they basically inject these hydrogen atoms into the plant oil to make it solid at room temperature and have properties like butter, right? That's what shortening is, but they call it shortening because it shortens your life, basically. So uh, it, you want to stay away from that. There is no doubt. Uh, there's no controversy. There's no nutrition scientist, no professional association, no government uh, that says that this is something we should be consuming anymore. Like it's just it's just a, a hard no. So I would say if there's one hard and fast rule, make sure nothing you're eating has hydrogenated fats in it. And you have to read the ingredient list. You can't just look at the front of the package. The next hard rule, I would say, and I heard this from Andy Wilde, you know, he, he was one of my mentors, really amazing guy who sort of led the integrative medicine movement. Uh, and and uh, he, he, I heard him, I think, on Larry King or something about diet and nutrition. It's really simple. Just don't eat anything with high fructose corn syrup or hydrogenated fats. And that'll cure like 90% of your dietary problems. And I think he's right. I mean, if you look at, you know, uh, high fructose corn syrup, again, it's one of those things, well, is it bad? How bad is it? Does it really cause a problem? It's, you know, basically you know, just sugar and how is it different? And, 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 and it, you know, we can talk about that in a minute, but, but basically if it's in a food, it means it's a highly processed industrial food product. It's not whole food. So just that alone just should make you put it back on yourself. Now the hydro, uh, the high fructose corn syrup is basically, again, deconstructed food. They take the corn and they kind of process it with alkali. It actually has some mercury in it. Some of the ways they process it causes it to have mercury. And there was a, actually a study on this, which was quite interesting. They, it was from uh, colleagues of mine who, who called up, you know, the, the, uh, Archer Daniels Midland who makes high fructose corn syrup. And they said, Hey, can we have a that of this you want to study and they're like oh no you can't it's proprietary they called up and said and changed the story they said, hey we're starting a new beverage company we want to use their your product can we try some and they sent them a barrel of it and then immediately they tested it and they found it actually had fairly significant levels of mercury uh, but that's not the real issue the issue is it's basically deconstructed so in normal sugar uh, glucose and fructose are bound together. In high fructose corn syrup, they're not. They're free, and it's free fructose. Now, it can be anywhere from 55% to 75% fructose. Now, fructose doesn't raise your insulin levels or, or your blood sugar levels, but it does go uh, into your body in a way that, that actually causes insulin resistance, causes inflammation, elevates uric acid, which is something that's an important blood test to check. And, and, and I, as I mentioned before on the podcast, I'm a co-founder of Function Health, and functionhealth.com. And it's one of the tests we do as part of the function health panel to look at uric acid because it's so important as an indicator of your overall diet quality and the level of, of this problem that can interfere with 
your metabolism and, and, and in many ways be very harmful. And my friend David Perlmutter wrote a book called Drop Acid, and it doesn't mean LSD, it means drop your uric acid. So that's a, a deep dive. And there's a scientist named Richard Johnson, he's actually giving grand rounds at Cleveland Clinic soon, uh, who's uh, been a pioneer in this research. But it's, it's, it's really not great for us. So the other thing is that it's, it's energy using. So in order to absorb fructose, unlike glucose, it requires a lot more energy. And so when you're eating a lot of fructose, it takes a lot of energy in the gut, and that actually causes the gut to weaken and leaky and become leaky, and then you get these holes in your intestine, and that causes food and bacteria to leak in, causing inflammation throughout the body, which leads to heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancer, Alzheimer's, you know, you name it. It's really bad. So you don't want to do that. Um, next is uh, if you see it advertised on TV, probably bad for you. Right. When did you see an ad for almonds or broccoli uh, on television? Uh, probably never. Right. Uh, but food, the, the, the data is really interesting on marketing. The worst foods for you have the most dollars spent on marketing and particularly television advertising. So basically, don't eat anything that uh, to advertise on TV. Also, um, you know, if it has a health claim on the label, it's bad for you, likely, right? I saw a bag of potato chips recently, and it said gluten-free. Well, does that mean it's healthy? No. It's like, it's, I saw, I saw what I saw, a, a brownie at some uh, concert I went to, and I was like, no dairy, no gluten, no you know, blah, 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 whatever it was. And, and then I'm looking at the thing, it's like, it's like so much sugar. And I'm like, this is not a health food, right? So basically, if it has a health claim on the label, don't eat it. If it says, you know, lowers your cholesterol or high fiber or low fat or, you know, no added sugar or whatever the freaking thing is. I guarantee you it's just covering up something that's really bad for you. Also, um, you know, just no brainer. Don't go to fast food restaurants. Like just don't like, um, uh, you know, I think a chicken nugget has like, I don't know, 27 or 37, seven ingredients. And one of which is chicken. Um, just don't, don't eat that food. It's, it's, it's made in ways that are really bad. In fact, the, the, a, a, a burger at McDonald's is, is actually, I think, only 50% beef. And then the rest of it's all this weird filler and stuff that we shouldn't be eating. Uh, another thing you should pay attention to, which is used a lot, and there's many names for this. So you have to be really diligent. And I'd encourage you to Google uh, MSG and all the names for MSG or monosodium glutamate. Now, this is an excitotoxin. Uh, this is something that glutamate is an important uh, neurotransmitter that regulates uh, something called NMDA receptors in the brain. And uh, if you over stimulate these, it, it actually can lead to all kinds of brain issues uh, and cognitive dysfunction. And, you know, many people get the Chinese restaurant headache, you know, because uh, they get that too much MSG in their food. Um, it can be called hydrolyzed vegetable protein, which might sounds good, or vegetable protein, or natural flavorings even sounds great, right? It can be spices. So, you know, you don't, want to do that. Now, why, you know, I mean, I, I you could say, oh, Dr. Hyman, you're being extreme. What's a little this or that or whatever. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. But, you know, how do they, how do they actually induce obesity in lab rats when they want to study obesity? It's very fascinating. They give them MSG because it makes them hungry and gain weight. Uh, also, also, the most obese population in the world, and I learned this from a nutritionist who went and studied their diet and, and lived with them in, the, in, the, in Samoan. And, and she found that they, for breakfast, had ramen noodles, I think, uh, with, um, I think, sugar on top and then MSG on top of that. So they put like MSG and uh, on the ramen noodles as a way of flavoring them, but it, it really led to them being the most obese population in the world. They have like ninety percent diabetes rates. Uh, also, you know, if you're if you're looking at aerosol cans, there are certain spray cans that are okay, but aerosol is just bad for the environment. It's bad for the ozone layer, and I wouldn't eat it. Um, also, you have to be careful when you're eating cheese. Right? First of all, dairy is a problem in itself for for many reasons. Uh, we have 
hybrid uh, hybridized cows essentially where we breed them to you know create certain properties but it, it's led to high levels of something called a1 casein in most modern dairy which is inflammatory but 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 it, you know they're often you know fed all kinds of weird things and they're they're milk while they're pregnant there are lots of hormones it, it's it, the the modern dairy is really bad but as i say like you know goat cheese or sheep cheese or a2 cows or heirloom cows can't be okay for people who tolerate dairy and many people don't but there are uh, many cheese-like products out there, like Velveeta cheese, maybe you remember that, or Kraft Singles. You know why they call it Kraft Singles? Because they can't call it cheese. Why? Because it's not more than 51% cheese, and the government says you can't call it cheese if it's not got 51% cheese. So it has 51 or 2%. It could be a cheese-like product, but it's not cheese. So stay away from all that weird stuff. Also, artificial sweeteners. I'm going to take this one on, and, and we can talk a lot about this, but... You know, uh, there are population studies that indicate that, you know, it, it increases obesity, diabetes, but those can be confounded because people who drink diet drinks may be already overweight or prone to it and trying to lose weight. So there's that. Uh, it does affect your microbiome. There's no doubt about that from the research that can create inflammation and we call metabolic endotoxemia, and that's work out of Israel. And, and there's a, many other studies on the microbiome. I mean, I... <laughs> I know <laughs> when these first came out, someone gave me a chocolate bar. I said, there's no sugar in this chocolate bar. And I was at work. I was like, oh, I'm going to eat this chocolate bar. It's like really yummy. And I was hungry. And I, I think I ate the whole thing. And, uh, and it was a disaster. You know, uh, my friend Dave Asprey calls it disaster pants. It was kind of like that. So it has a huge effect on your microbiome. It causes fermentation, bloating, distension. Uh, and I would really encourage you all just to stay away from the sugar alcohols for that reason. Uh, the other things like, uh, you know, sac uh, saccharin or sucralose or aspartame, um, you know, they're usually in processed foods or usually in poor quality foods or usually in foods with very low nutrients there. You know, they can, you know, there can be in some things that are okay, but I think you better stay away from them. I think uh, stevia may be all right. Monk fruit may be all right. Uh, we're still trying to figure that out, but I, I would, I would really stay away from all the other artificial sweeteners. Also anything that's like, you know, uh, funky additives, preservatives, dyes, you know, we eat about two to a pounds of these every year. I mean, this is, this is crazy. I mean, uh, pounds of this stuff. So, you know, it's a little bit, but actually when you add up all the processed food people eat, which is 60% of our diet, it's literally pounds of this stuff every year. So you want to not eat that stuff. And, uh, in many countries, by the way, there, are, there, are, the things that we allow here are banned. We get stuff in this country that is, um, kind of based on this, this kind of, uh, idea uh, that, you know, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty, which is actually okay for, you know, uh, you know, law and for people, but not for food. <laughs> you should have to prove safety before you actually introduce it into the food supply. So a lot of things got grandfathered in what, like whether it's BHT or BPA or, or, um, you know, certain dyes and chemicals. We know that these are problematic and I think I encourage you not to eat them. Uh, and also just, you know, Probably to eat food with not too many ingredients, right? If if they're all ingredients you recognize, like, you know, on a tomato, like tomato, water, basil, oregano, salt, fine. But uh, that's a good rule. Although some things with more than five ingredients are okay. Like I have recipes with obviously more than five ingredients. So, but it's just like if it's, if it's a processed food, just be very diligent. Learn how to read the labels. The nutrition facts is super confusing, but just turn the thing over and read the actual ingredients. And, and oh, this is an interesting thing I should just mention. I wrote about it in Food Fix. In, in, in most countries, um, you know, they put the percent of the uh, thing on the food ingredient label. So if it says like sugar, it'll say 32%, right? In America, you know, what they said is you have to put the ingredients in the order of the amount, right? Which, okay, that's fine. But what food companies do then is they'll, instead of like saying sugar is the number one ingredient, they'll put in five different kinds of sugar. They'll put in brown sugar, brown rice sugar, white sugar, you know, corn syrup, and this, that. And then they, and it adds up being like the most sugar is the, it, the predominant ingredient. But, but since it's broken down to these five different types of sugar, it actually doesn't look like that. So be really smart about it and, uh, and just, you know, stay away from all that crap. So I know it seems like a lot, but, uh, it, it's really simple. Just, don't eat processed, ultra processed food. Don't eat high fructose corn syrup. Don't uh, have hydrogen fats. Don't eat things you can't pronounce or ingredients you don't recognize. And, and don't eat things your great grandmother probably wouldn't eat. And you'll be fine. So listen, 
We know food is medicine. Food is information. Food is instructions. It's code. It regulates every single aspect of your biology. It's what you're made of. It regulates your hormones, your immune system, your brain chemistry, your gene expression, your microbiome. I mean, literally everything that is going on inside of you is regulated by food. So if you're putting the wrong information in, you're going to get corrupted biological software. And we don't want that because that drives disease. It drives not just disease, but it drives you feeling like crap. It drives you to, to actually have all sorts of weird symptoms that we don't need to have, whether it's just sluggishness, brain fog, digestive issues, pimples, whatever it is, you don't need it because it's often connected to food. And the quality of the food you eat matters more than anything else. And, and yes, uh, we need protein, we need fats, we need carbs, we need vitamins, minerals, fiber, et cetera, phytochemicals. But how we eat them matters. How uh, they're constructed, which food shouldn't be constructed, it should just be food, right? It matters. And we're going to talk about what I mean by that in a minute. Um, but if you don't actually have uh, the right food, you're not going to actually create the right biological instructions that tell your body what to do every minute, minute to minute. Some of you may know this, some might be obvious, but it's worth a refresher and it's good to sort of circle back. And I, you know, I'm amazed that, I, you know, sometimes I even get into trouble because I think something's healthy. I pick it out of the shelf. It's, you know, it's a convenience food. It's not always bad to have convenience foods. And then, and I kind of pick it up. This sounds great on the front of the package. And then I kind of go with the ingredient list and I'm like, Oh, -oh. <laughs> and I put it back on the shelf. So, uh, it's really, really important to think about uh, what you're eating. There's a big conversation now around ultra processed food. And there's a lot of data coming out around this concept of ultra processed food. And what does that exactly mean? It means food that's deconstructed from its original form, basically pulverized the molecular shape structure of the molecules are changed and it's reassembled into things that look like food but aren't actually food and that actually make you sick and die faster. And I'm not just saying this. The data is really clear. For every 10% of your diet that's ultra-processed food, your risk of death goes up by 14%. In one study that Kevin Hall did at the NIH, if you eat ultra-processed food and you can you know, have as much as you want versus you know, healthy whole foods and you can eat as much as you want, the people who are offered the ultra-processed food, and this was the same group, just a crossover trial, actually ate 500 calories more a day when they were allowed to eat ultra processed food because it dysregulates your biology in a, such a way that it, it turns off the satiety singles. It makes you feel like you need more. You know, I always say, you know, people who are deficient in nutrients want to eat more because they're looking for the nutrients. Your body is intelligent like that. Kids who are iron deficient will eat dirt to get iron. Uh, and we eat more and more food to try to get the nutrients that are not in our food. So processing itself is not bad. We as human beings have been processing food forever. Cooking is a form of processing, right? Fermenting is a form of processing. Drying foods like dried strawberries or beef jerky is a processed food. Fermenting foods, yogurt or sauerkraut is a processed food. That doesn't mean it's bad, right? But it's, this is stuff that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. We've, you know, processed olives to make olive oil. That's okay. But, it, you know, it's really about these, these Franken foods that are not really food, that are deconstructed from wheat, corn, and soy into ingredients and things that you don't even know where they're coming from. If you say maltodextrin on the label, well, who's got maltodextrin in their cabinet and eats that with their salad, right? Nobody knows what that is. That comes from corn. It comes from, well, basically GMO corn, and it's very full of chemicals and pesticides, and it's it's highly uh, glycemic. And you get all these weird things like mono and diglycerides. And like, what is that stuff? Well, it's a kind of fat, but it's it's extracted from soy and it's processed in ways to create a mouthfeel that makes you want to eat more. And basically, actually, there was an article that came out, I think it was in Forbes a few days ago, that talked about how the tobacco companies were actually food companies for a while. Like it was uh, RJR Nabisco, right? Uh, Philip Morris Kraft. So they, they kind of merged. And then they when they owned those companies, when the tobacco companies owned the food companies, they actually re-engineered foods to make them more addictive, just as they re-engineered cigarettes. To, and it was very nefarious. And you, you really, it's, it's not like just a bunch of, you know, kind of conspiracy theory stuff. It's actually very well documented. And, and this was well documented actually by 
by uh, Michael Moss in his book, Salt, Sugar, and Fat, who was actually the first guest on the Doctor's Pharmacy podcast. You can go way back to episode one and listen to that if you want. So we need to make sure we're eating foods that uh, you know are processed in ways that we want to eat processed foods. They're good. So for example, yesterday I had a can of mussels for lunch. Uh, and it was basically, you know, water and mussels. <laughs> and I opened a can. And, well, and it was a BPA-free can because I made sure it was BPA-free, which is a, uh, a, t- a toxin that's used to line cans. So it's not terrible. Or I had, you know, I made a tomato sauce the other night and I, I had a can of tomatoes. It was tomatoes, water, and salt. That's okay. But it's 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 uh, really important to understand that that, you know, having whole foods that are processed in ways that preserve them and and maintain their nutritional um value is is okay like frozen foods are actually okay because they're they're processed but they're frozen but they're actually very nutrient dense if you take berries it's they're actually much better if you get frozen berries than if you go to the store and buy them because they're, you know, picked ripe and fr- flash frozen. So they actually have much more nutritional value on some foods. So you want to get rid of all the food-like substances, all the industrial food. You know, Michael Pollan said, don't eat food that was made in a plant. Eat food that was grown in a plant. Right? Um, so get rid of the food-like substances, the franken foods, the chemicals, additives, preservatives, food dyes, artificial sweeteners. There's no reason we should be consuming these things. And we can argue, is it is artificial sweetener bad? Is it good? Does it cause cancer? Is it screw up your microbiome? Does it cause diabetes, weight gain? And there's scientists on both sides who will argue to the end of time about whether it's good for you or bad for you. But basically, in my view, is eat real food. You know, that we know that's what we evolved with. We know that works. And everything else, you know, we may or may not find out is harmful. But uh, it, it increasingly, we find out things are harmful after the fact. You know, Crisco was invented in 1911. It wasn't until like 2005 that the, or was it 2015? No, I think it was 2005. I can't remember. I'm, I'm old now, so I forget things. I got old timer's disease. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, uh, it, it was a long time ago that that they invented it, but it was almost a century before they actually uh, said it's going to kill you if you eat it. But by the way, it's still in food, believe it or not, because uh, because of the way the food industry and the FDA are tied in together, there's all these loopholes that allowed them to still have it in the food. It's 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 sort of ruled as generally. Uh, recognized as safe, which is called the grass, GRS. It was grass, and a lot of things got grandfathered, grandfathered in. But they said it's a non-grass food, not generally recognized as safe. So it doesn't mean it's banned exactly. So it's kind of a little weird thing. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. We're taking all the foods that cause inflammation, that are, are toxic uh, to your system, that are inflammatory, the mess with your gut, and you're putting in foods that actually help reset your system. And it's pretty much a very simple approach. It's lots of veggies, so 